right down and go in. Hello, who is that? Shireen. Oh, do you know what time this is? What's the matter? That's terrible. You mean you won't be going to school at all? Who is it, Oh, no one, Dad. It's the wrong number. Listen, he can't force you to do anything. Who is it? You've just got to stand up for yourself. Well, chaps, today's the day. And what day is that? Queen's birthday, opening of Parliament. When 12 just men and true pass judgment on me. Oh, Mr. V, not going to nobble a jury for you. Oh, that's not for the likes of me, Dennis. I've got to take what's coming to me. What do you want, Harris? I just came to say goodbye, Barnsley. Well, if I were you, I'd have waited until they collected up the razor blades. No, no, don't be like that. You've said your goodbyes now. Push off. Well, aren't you going to wish me luck? I'll get the tea for you. Thank you. I want you to tell me what's going on. I'm going this morning and we'll settle it once and for all. Then I want to come with you. You will stay here. Someone has to be in the shop. Don't keep her waiting. I want to talk to you. <clears throat> I want to know what you're going to say. Not now. Cold morning, Mrs. Thomas. Ah, yes, it is indeed. Thank you. Thank you. There are some things a woman understands better than a man. I have told you before, I will not have my judgment questioned. Hi. Morning, Uncle. Good morning. Oh. Thank you. May I? David, shut the door, please, will you? Oh, sorry. Hey, you know, this article is fascinating. It's the whole spiel about the politics behind AIDS research. Do you know, there are scientists all over the world trying to find a cure, but behind the scenes, it's just a race against time to see who can get the Nobel Prize. Do you know, they're actually spying on each other, behaving like rivals. David. At a time when everybody should be cooperating. David, I try to pretend I'm not a doctor until about 9 o'clock every morning. Oh, yeah? And since when does a doctor come off duty? When he's reading his morning paper, for one. Oh, uh, tell me, has your mother got a compact display? Sorry? No, there's a new issue of Beethoven's Ninth on CD, and I was wondering if I should send it to her. You're just not interested, are you? Well, politics, no. Results, yes. Look, the two cannot be separated. David, listen, you've brought the post, you've got your apple. Is there anything else? No. Oh. No, I'm sorry I disturbed you, right? Hey, your mug. All right. Sorry again. Morning, Pauline. Oh, morning, Dr. Lane. Is it all right if I hang on to this? It's last month's. Yes, yeah, sure. Ah! Oh, look at that. Chewing gum under the seat. It's disgusting. <laughs> Listen, Pauline, about our little get-together on Thursday. Yeah. I thought egg and lettuce sandwich, some cheese, just simple stuff, eh? Oh, yeah, I can manage that. I always think it's a good idea to have something to eat for having a drink. Now, what about some uh, pate and a fruit salad, eh? Well, it depends how much you want to spend. Fruit's expensive this time of the year. Oh, we must have fruit, you know, oranges, pineapples, plenty of nuts. After all, it's supposed to be a party. It's just a little get-together for people who work here. Now, we have asked everybody to bring a friend. You asked? Yes, well, when you made up your minds how much you want to spend on the food, just let me know. I'll make sure there's enough, however many's coming. Well, look, uh, how's that for starters? And uh, if you need oh. any more, just let me know, all right? Oh, thank you very much. Right. Pauline, there is no need to be extravagant. No, Dr. Lake. Hiya. Hello, you're early. Yep, I want to get ahead of myself. It's like this time of the year, every other person wants to see a doctor. Mm. We've just been talking about the surgery party. Sounds like it's going to be a good do. Yep, I've asked Sharon, I expect Careful babysit. Right. I'm going to be late at the laundrette today. Dot's too upset about that lazy good-for-nothing son of hers to come in. I said to her, I said you should be pleased to see the back of him. Still he is her flesh and blood, I suppose. Listen, Mum, I want a quick word. Yeah, later. Have you seen this? All this is crisp packets and sweetie wrappers. No wonder people get ill. But you've already doubled the numbers. Suddenly a small get-together has become a full-scale party. It does come only once a year. We might as well go for I drink. already ordered some drink. Beer, orange juice, lemonade and two bottles of wine. Yeah, well, I think we might need a bit more than that. Look, don't worry about it. I'll see I can it. assure you it's not a question of being mean. Oh, no, 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 no. Of course not. I've been running this practice for the past 40 years. I don't need you to subsidise the Christmas party. So what else did she say? She's not allowed out. I mean, not even to school. They're sending her away to a boarding school. She should just box off. Yeah, but it's all your fault. Mine! Well, you know how her parents feel about her going with boys. I didn't go with her. Maybe didn't mind if you thought they had, did you? All right, all right. Morning, gang. Everything all right? What does it look like? Oh, there's a corpse under the table. Sure is been getting an every ride from her old man again. Oh, it's... What's it all about? In a few words, please. We're only fixing her up an arranged marriage. And sending her away to a boarding school. 
We spoke about this before, Ricky. They've got different ideas to us, son. You've got to learn to live and let live. But an arranged marriage in 1988? Come off it, Dad. Darling, listen to me. I'm sure Mr. Cream has only got the best in mind for his daughter, and if he feels that an arranged marriage is the best way to ensure her happiness, you can bet your bottom dollar he's got a good reason. You agree with him? I'm not saying I oh, agree. Oh, come off it, Listen to me, boy. I'm not saying I agree with him. What I am saying is he may have a point. I mean, God knows unarranged marriages haven't got a tremendous track record, not right. Darling, where are you going? I'm trying to... T Would you have married someone your parents chose for you? The simple answer to that is no, son, but I may have done better if I had. The nitty-gritty of living with a woman day in, day out, 24 hours a day, 52 weeks a year. I mean, responsibilities, families, commitments, the, the mere task of working at a relationship. Well, I tell you, son, one form is as good as another, and no matter what way you try it. Just because you and Pat weren't good at it, it don't mean other people can't do it better. Oh, son, yes, yes, yes. We've made our mistakes and we've learned the hard way. But you can't tell me that Mr. Cream is behaving like something out of a horror movie, son. I mean, you can't tell me all these people in the papers you read about are getting married for love. No way. It's good for business. It's good for careers. I mean, in the past, when Lord Muck or Baron Cotton Mill decided it was time for his offspring to settle down, the old man chose the right family to marry into. It's been around a long, long time, Ricky. So the appointment's for you? I will be coming. Only if it's for your wife. Could you tell me her symptoms? This is a matter for the doctor only. Fine. Um, well, Dr. Samuels could see you at about oh, 11. No, 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 not the young one. Dr. Legg, please. Well, he's very busy this morning, but, um... Oh, yeah, you can see your wife at 12. The appointment is for my daughter, and we'll be here at 12 o'clock. Thank you. Here we go. Rody, come on, sir. Where you go? Come on. Morning, gents. Usual. Here we go. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Hey, are you out there, are they? Hey, Hello, Pete. You're a bit early, mate, aren't you? Do you want the business or do you want the business? I want the business. Well, give me a double vodka. Must be cold out there, Frank. <laughs> I'm yeah, getting old. Okay. Who's mine on the stall, sir? Arthur. Funny, you don't seem to feel it like me. Yeah, me old son, that'll make your blood warm. Listen, you want to watch it, me old mate. I don't want to see you hanging around for them doors to open up them two over there, you know. Are you following me? No, I just arrived at the same time. Sheer coincidence. What is it? Walford Haulage. They're registered officer at this address. That is right. One of the trucks in the square, it's been grounded. What's that mean? It can't go on the road. Fined, tied down. Why? We've been checking the treads. The rear left is two millimetres out. It may seem a small thing, but out of true is out of true, and I'm a stickler for detail, especially if it's illegal. Tired treads. I'd have thought you had more important ways of filling your days. There's been one of your cars parked outside my bar for two days now. What are they checking? Parking on double yellow lines? Just general surveillance, Miss Francis. All packed and ready to go? Yeah. Just about. You'd better get down there. Go and get ready for a stock take. You never know what Johnny Harris might have left lying about. Meaning? When you're taking over the rest of his operation, you might find a few mucky deals that you hadn't thought of. I've already told you. I'm going to do it, Mark. We'll see. Don't waste too much time, evening. Do it yourself, Job. Pickfords couldn't make it. Don't forget a little chat, Watts. It's about my daughter. Oh, what's the problem? She's Shireen? not ill, Dr. Lake. Is she a bit under the weather? I need your opinion. But about what? what? What is the problem, Shireen? I want her examined. Look, Mr. Karim, unless you tell me what I'm looking for, I can't help. And anyway, why not let your daughter speak for herself? Are you in, in pain or anything? She won't tell me what has passed between her and a boy. I'm her father and I have a right to know. Look, Mr. Karim, <laughs> if you've got a problem with your daughter, I sympathise. It's natural to worry about that sort of thing, but it's hardly something a doctor can help with, is it? I don't think you quite understand, Dr. Legg. When Shirin is a little older, she will be married. And I have to arrange this marriage with a family who will trust me completely. There are certain things that they have a right to know about their future daughter-in-law. Are you asking me to establish whether your daughter is still Virgo intacta, still a virgin? Exactly, Dr. Legg. I'm going to ask you to leave us alone, Mr. Karim. Michel, would you come inside a moment, please? I suggest you wait outside.
on this side. मुझको बता आपका बच्चा के भी पैदा होगा टेल मी व्हेन इज योर चाइल्ड यू टू बी बोर्न प्लीज डोंट टच मी आई डोंट वांट हिम टू टच मी डॉक्टर लेग्स नॉट गोना हर्ट यू आई एम नॉट अफ्रेड ऑफ पेन आई जस्ट वांट बी एग्जामिनेड इट्स नॉट गोना डू एनीथिंग डोंट वरी नो शरीन आई जस्ट वांट टू टॉक टू यू एंड द फर्स्ट थिंग यू शुड नो इज दैट नो डॉक्टर इन दिस कंट्री हैज द राइट टू गिव यू दिस काइंड ऑफ एग्जामिनेशन अनलेस यू वांट इट सो प्लीज देयर इज नो नीड टू बी अफ्रेड सी लुक कैन आई गेट योर ग्लास ऑफ वाटर और समथिंग नो आई डोंट वांट एनीथिंग पर्हैप्स यू वांट टू टेल मी समथिंग दैट यू कैन्ट टॉक टू योर फादर अबाउट You mean am I pregnant? Well, I'm not. But he acts as though he's a prostitute. He doesn't trust me. He has no respect for me. Your father loves you, Shireen. You may not agree with the way he shows it, but you're his child, and he wants the best for you. He doesn't care about what I think. He won't even talk about it. All he cares about is getting a good deal in an arranged marriage. Yeah, but your parents wouldn't choose a man who they didn't think would make you happy. Would you want your parents to choose a husband for you? Did you expect your parents to find you a wife? Well, imagine how I feel being dragged here like an animal. Now, come on, come on! Don't upset yourself again. Doctor Legs just here to help you. That's right. I'm sorry. It's just that I don't want to have the kind of life my mum's had. She's always been treated like a child. She's never been anywhere without her parents or her husband. I don't want to be like that. I couldn't. But it's hard for your father. Hard for him. I'll tell you something, Shireen. My family were immigrants and I know that what your father is afraid of is assimilation because what you are where you come from these things are important. Do you know what he's afraid of? He's a powerful man at home. He's afraid of losing that power. But if I give in to him now I'll never be independent. Did you know Shireen that in most synagogues the women sit upstairs? Do you think that's right? Well, it's tradition the way things are. Doesn't mean to say it's right though, does it? So. I've never met a Jew before. <laughs> you can hardly tell the difference, eh? But I know Shireen that It's important not to turn your back on your own people. Oh, I know the color of my skin and where I come from. There's no doubt about that. I'm not turning my back on anything. No, no, of course not. But first, I'm a person. I want to learn from my friends, be equal with them, find my own way about in society. I'm not in a village in a country I've never seen. I'm here. I want to help my family, take my mum away on holiday, just the two of us. I'm not going to be treated like a child all my life and I'm not going to let my father humiliate me. Look, what I'm going to suggest, Serene, is that we get your father back in here and sort things out. Meanwhile, I think you'll be better back at school. You won't let me go back to school. That's all right. I'll talk to your father. Michelle, would you ask him to come through again? Please? Miss Karen, can you come in there, please? Uh, Mr. Karim, first of all, I think it's important that Shireen gets back to school as soon as possible. Apart from anything else, we may have difficulties with the education authorities. Do as the doctor says, Shireen. Straight home. Put your uniform on, and I'll come and fetch you this afternoon. Understand? Right. Uh, if you take a seat, please, Mr. Karim. Hello, Benny. Can we bring you to the party, Shireen? If I play me cards right. Oh, Frank. I've been on my feet all morning, eating some orange juice. You're just the lady I want to see. Do me a favour, darling, come in tonight, please. Pat's gone up to the West End shop, and by the time she gets back, she'll be absolutely knackered. Well, it makes a long day, but I can't say I don't find the money useful this time of the year. Listen, uh, I think I'm in a but uh, I was wondering. Pete. What's he gone and done now? So, what's this about the party? And how long do I have to wait till you ask me? Well, of course I'm going to ask you. It stands to reason. I mean, it's a nice feeling walking in arm in arm with a man. Nice feeling for a man as well. Nice feeling to wake up in the morning knowing there's someone in the house you care about, someone to talk to, someone you want to look after. Now, don't start this again, Benny. Please. I've told you I'm a confirmed widow and I'm too old to change my ways. I'm not proposing, of course. Oh no, you're not. You're propositioning me. My age. Too. Age has nothing to do with it. Well, of course it has. I'm using my brain. So what do I need a big empty house for? A man on my own. Sell it. Oh, why didn't I think of that? That's the thing about you, Ethel. You're not just a pretty face. Thanks for telling us. That's all right, darling. Just have you drinking large vodkas at half past ten in the morning. I think you're sailing pretty close to the wind. You didn't want me saying, love, did you? No, you did the right thing. Cheers, sir. Mum, mum, listen, you stay for a bit. Only oh, for a while. Great, Frank. This is from Doctor Samuel's order for the party. Oh, let's have a look at this. Thing. 
Well, he's doing you proud this time, though. It's going to be better than the last one, over it? That's for sure. Well, I hope Dr. Legg enjoys it. He doesn't usually make much of Christmas, so it's nice to see the two of them getting in the right spirit. It's more than can be said for some of my family. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Mum. See, me and Sharon have had a think, and along with Ian, we've all decided that we'll spend Christmas with you after all. Oh, Michelle, oh, that's wonderful. Oh, it is the right decision, I know. Wait till I tell Arthur. The thought of you just not being there, well, was just too awful. I love my little granddaughter and all. Oh, that's lovely. We thought it was more important to spend it with the family, you know. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, um, about bringing Sharon to the party. <laughs> Well, I don't think you ought to ask Kath to babysit. Not at the moment, where things are. So I can't bring my best mate to the No, 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 no. Ask your dad. He'll do it. He won't mind. Dad's not going? No, I'm going on my own. <laughs> can't put yourself first all the time, can you? See you later. Ta, friend. But why don't you see it from my point of view? There are girls her age who behave little better than prostitutes. It'd be natural for her to imitate that sort of behaviour. There is no doctor in this country who would do what you're asking. I mean... The girl has rights of privacy over her own body, and in any case, at her age, such an experience could be extremely traumatic. You think I'm a cruel, unfeeling man, using my parental authority to make my child unhappy. You're wrong. No, you're not cruel. I know that. I want to protect my daughter. Her virginity is something I will one day guarantee her future father-in-law. Yes, uh, you're talking about an arranged marriage. Yes, of course. Well, Shireen won't ever agree to that. Oh, in time she will. Mr. Karim. You are living in England and your children are growing up as English people. It would be ridiculous if they didn't want to live as the people around them live. You cannot stop assimilation, adaptation. In fact, it's important it happens. But tradition is also important. I don't want Shireen to lose touch with her own people, her culture. And most of all, it is very wrong that she shows me no respect and that she's stubborn and insolent. But children have to rebel against their parents. That's a law of nature. But nature is sometimes wrong. <laughs> Mr. Karim, I know that there is racism in this country and that as long as people are persecuted for the colour of their skins and their religious beliefs, they will defend their right to be different. But all I'm saying is that let Shireen decide for herself what path she wants to take. She may well choose to live traditionally of her own free will. By then it'll be too late and now she's too young to know. Look, Mr. Karim, my family were immigrant Jews from Russia and I married a Gentile. My parents said they understood, but I'm sure that they never quite forgave me. It was their loss. They were right. You separated yourself from your people, your culture. Look what has happened to you. You're alone. You have no family near you to look after you. Everyone in the square knows you're a Jew, even though you never go to a Jewish temple. You are tolerated, doctor, but never accepted as one of them. In your heart, you know that is the truth. You'd have been wiser to know you could never escape. It is the others who put up the bars, and that is what Shireen must learn. Well, Jimmy, old mate, what can I get you? Vodka, aftershave, tickets for the Phantom of the Opera? It's a social visit. Oh, I thought me and you were falling out. No, it's, uh, well, at first sight, it seems as though I might owe you an apology. Well, you should learn to trust me a bit more. Yeah, maybe I should, but there's a new batch coming in tonight. I've got my new cellmate. Oh, we started to look forward to it, wasn't it? No, I don't like change. I got used to you, then. Well, at least you give your vocal cords a rest. The way you've been getting chatty lately, you're in danger of ending up with laryngitis. I suppose the new cellmate will be getting the silent treatment. Until I got him sussed. And if I don't like you're him... You're splattering all around the walls. You know something, Barnsley? You have a real good way of making people feel very welcome. Oh, Doc, I've got your order, manager. You bring it over. Any time tomorrow, thanks for it. Don't give me your words, Dave. Come on. Yeah. That's about all <laughs> At that time, the war was on. Golda and me, well, we still wanted to get married in the old, traditional way. Hitler wasn't going to stop us. Well, I'd no idea you were religious, Benny. I wasn't. Neither was Golda. But it was the feeling of tradition. They built this hopper, that's a sort of arbor, like a sweet pea frame thing in the middle of the synagogue, covered in flowers, and I'm standing under it. Then Golda comes and joins me. Oh, she looked lovely in her white dress, no bouquet, just one white rose in her hand. And the two of us stood under the flowers. Then, after the rabbi declared that we were man and wife, they put this glass on the carpet, like this. And the groom, that's me, he stamps a little and breaks it. Whatever for? We're supposed to bring you good luck. Whenever you want luck, you break a glass. <laughs> Worked for me and Golda anyhow. 
You better get a dustpan and brush, Barry. Was that you, David? Yeah, what's the problem? Oh, nothing. I see you've been out to lunch again, have you? Oh, just to the Vic. You know, I don't know why you don't go there more often. It makes a break. No, as a matter of fact, I had a couple of calls. It's just as well I was here. Anyway, I don't think it's a bad idea for a doctor to keep a distance from his patients. Well, you have been known to go there yourself, of course. Yeah, that's all right, so long as you can recognise that there are professional boundaries. Well, as long as one is able to step over them now and again. Fine, as long as you can keep your authority when you need to, that's it. Yeah, you know, you look tired. Would you, would you like a cup of coffee? I'm no, not... no, I'm not tired, I'm just preoccupied. Well, I, uh, I thought we could have dinner together tonight. I feel like cooking, we could have it down here. Well, I'm not so decrepit, I can't cook my own dinner. Look, I'd like to if you're free. Oh, well, thank you. That's fine. But not too late. You always eat so late. Any time you like. And no politics. Right. Hey, I had a visit from Mr. Karim today. He wanted me to examine his daughter. And? To see if she was still Virgo intacta. Oh. Well, what did he say when he told him to get out? I didn't. Hiya. Is it not getting at all today? No, I've come for all day. I told her. I said, I've got an evening's work ahead of me. You can come in here and finish off. I'm looking at all this lot. This is for the party? Yes. I know I should have said no, but you know me. Anyway, if you've come in for that wash shower and left, that's it there. Right. Now then, I have to tidy myself up when I get to the pub. Do I look all right? Because I know if I go home and do Martin's tea, there's bound to be something else needs doing I'll get caught up with. Look, fine. Listen, uh, you, you, you get off to the pub. I'll take this lot home for you. Are you sure you don't mind? I mean, if you just hang on for ten minutes, she will be here. It's been one of those days today, what with people complaining and everything. You know, when I went in the shop to get the stuff for the party, that Mr Karim he nearly bit my head off. He's normally so polite, I don't know what's up with him. Right then, are you sure you're going to be all right? I'll be fine. All you right, darling. Off. Oh, and listen, I hope you with the food tomorrow. Oh, cheers. All Thanks, right. that. Ta-da. Yes. Ooh. You're all right, my darling? Yeah, well, I'm with you, but remember, I'm only made of flesh and blood. So, forget. Yeah, you can cut that out. And How long has he been in here? Since we opened. I bet Cass at home is dinner in the oven. You know, Dr. David gives a tremendous audience. It'll be a real good old knees on Thursday night. Shame about him and that girl. I've never seen her of anybody. No, this was back in Israel. There was some problem, I think. She went off with another bloke. I should feel sorry for him. Yeah, nice to get fun of her, won't you? Yeah, do you know what? He's got lovely hands. I always notice people's hands. I know, for right, please, but... Yes, can I help you? Frank, come on. Oh, hang on a minute, Frank. I want to serve you. Yes, Governor. Well, hello, you two. Hello, Trago. Uh, can we have a double vodka and a double scotch, please, Pauline? Yeah, uh, Ali, do you mind? Can I have a quiet word with Pete? Oh, sure, yeah, I'll do with a slash, you know what I mean? Full of oldie worldy child. Look, sis, you're the bar, mate, we're the punters, OK? I'm your sister. Frank says you've been in here since they opened. What's wrong with trying to keep warm after standing out there all day trying to get a living? Because Arthur's stall is mine, remember? Arthur's not employed out there on your behalf. Sis, Arthur went home hours ago. Oh, so that means you closed up early again. You know you always take more money in the last hour, especially at this time of the year. Mum must be turning in her grave. She worked all hours on that stall. Well, I'm not Mum, and neither are you. Mind you doing a great impersonation lately. Don't you give me no lip. I'm just worried about the business. And Kath who's out there working her socks off while you're in here drinking it all. How many of you have today? Oh, I don't believe this. Now, you listen to me. I can remember a time when you wouldn't let a, a drop of ale or spirit pass your lips till gone seven I'm at the machine, please. And now you've been drinking on and off all day long. It shows. It's just not good enough. Sis, have you finished? Yes, I have. Oh, Pete, why don't you go home, mate? Well, I tell you what, go and see Arthur then. He'd like that. Sis, you got cast us. Ali, I've had enough of this. Let's go down the right. Well, oh, I don't know, Pete. I fancy meeting that bitch down there. Come on, Al. Pete, oh. Come on. Sorry, Frank, I sent him home. Yeah, that's fine by me, darling. Well, it's been a long day. Surgery first thing, then the laundrette, shopping for the surgery party. Doc Cotton says she's so worried about that son of hers, she's had to take to her bed so she can work out what to do. Yeah, it beats me the way Doc Cotton dotes on that boy, you know. <laughs> if I was there, I'd pay him to stay away. Right, this is your new gaff. Hello, Varnsey. Good to meet you, sir, mate. Sure you'll make him welcome. Oi, move it! Evening. I'm Nick Cotton. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Osmond. I'm surprised to see you in here. 
No, of course. We never run a slate in this park. Oh, funny. All right? Have a nice evening, gentlemen. You do know there's a cop car sussing around outside the place? It's been there all day. I think this detective inspector Ashley, being a bit of a new boy around here, wants to make a discussion. Yeah, but he'd like details of all the trips of my driver that was nicked. Like that one that done us over? Yeah. And this new DIA thinks it was all tidied up too quickly. Why was that? But he thinks there's more people involved. Yeah, that Ashley bloke's a fisherman. Well, you wouldn't believe the felt bill go fishing, would you? Yeah, well, I reckon after some pretty big fish this time round, Pete. Enough, enough. David, it was a lovely Come on, no, have some more dessert. No, I, I can't, really. You know, all we need now to finish the evening is to sit in a cafe with some coffee and brandies. <laughs> Except one of us is always on call. I was just thinking how much I'd like to go to a concert. Yeah. In the old days, when I was a student, I couldn't afford a decent seat. Now that I can, I don't much fancy the idea of going alone. Well, perhaps we could. Well, we don't really have the same taste in music, you know. Maybe you should get yourself a companion, no? A lady, perhaps. <laughs> You'll be advocating an arranged marriage next. You think perhaps Kareem had a point after all? No, I trust that that is a joke. <laughs> no, he's a decent man, Kareem. And he's no fool either. Listen, look at this. Arrived this morning. From a Muslim family to their Jewish doctor. It's... Oh. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Apple. I've got to be making tracks. No, 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 no. Come on, Pete. One more, eh? Unless you got the old missus waiting for you at home, uh -huh. eh? My Cathy, she's a wonderful woman. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you something else. You can't have two first violins in the same band. Do you know that? <laughs> Unless it's a brass band, Pete. <laughs> ah, nice one, Al. Nice one. <laughs> Come along, boy. It's time to go home. Uh, oh, come on, Pete. We've been good, Apple. One more. Come on, I need my beauty sleep. Out. Come on, Pete. Next to young John Nettles is the maverick Channel Island crime fighter, the Jersey cop Jim Bergerac. After the break, here on Drama.